Ladies and gentlemen, gather around as we delve into a riveting exploration of the Gilded Age, a period in the history of the United States marked by both extraordinary progress and stark contrasts. From lavish opulence to gripping tales of human struggle, this journey through time promises to captivate your imagination. Number 1, The Gilded Age, spanning roughly from 1877 to 1896, earned its name from the rapid economic growth that contrasted with underlying inequalities. This era saw the United States experience unprecedented economic expansion, surging consumption, and significant increases in real wages. However, beneath this prosperity lay vast economic disparities, with the wealthy elite showcasing their opulence through extravagant clothing, elaborate jewelry, and sumptuous feasts. Number 2. Let us begin by understanding the essence of the Gilded Age. This era, often referred to as the Gilded Age or the Second Industrial Revolution, unfolded over approximately two decades from 1877 to 1896. Named after the swift economic expansion and the conspicuous display of wealth, this period was characterized by remarkable economic growth, particularly in the northern and western regions of the United States. The rise of industrialization created a demand for both skilled and unskilled labor, leading to a substantial influx of European immigrants between 1860 and 1890. Wages soared, and the railroad and mining industries, along with manufacturing and finance, fueled the economic boom. The West experienced rapid growth, with mining, agriculture, and livestock becoming pivotal, while the South struggled to recover from the economic aftermath of the Civil War due to the depreciation of cotton and tobacco prices. Number 3, the Gilded Age, while exuding an air of prosperity, also harbored a darker side of economic inequality and extreme poverty. The arrival of millions of low-skilled European immigrants, mostly from impoverished regions, saw the top 10% of the population owning three-quarters of the national wealth. In stark contrast, the bottom 40% possessed a mere 1.1% of the wealth. This stark division worried economists of the time, fearing that such inequality might steer the American economy away from its pioneering ideals. In this era, Human cost was significant, particularly concerning workplace, safety and labor rights. Industrial accidents were commonplace due to the absence of safety regulations and labor laws. Shockingly, in 1889, 1,972 railroad workers lost their lives to workplace accidents, while another 20,000 were injured. Unlike other industrialized nations, the United States lacked a worker compensation program, leaving injured workers with no support. Labor unions began to emerge, advocating for improved working conditions through strikes. However, these early labor movements were exclusive, discriminating against African Americans, Chinese immigrants, and women. Thus, the benefits mostly reached white American and European workers. Number 4. The Vanderbilt Mansion, a home to rival 120 apartments. The Vanderbilts, once amongst the wealthiest families in the United States during the Gilded Age, owe their prominence to Cornelius Vanderbilt, a shipping and railroad magnate. The legacy continued with George Washington Vanderbilt II, the Commodore's grandson, who erected a grand residence in Asheville, North Carolina, aptly named the Biltmore Estate. Spanning over 12,500 square meters, it remains the largest privately owned home in the United States. This opulent mansion offered not a moment of tedium, boasting a library with 10,000 books, a heated pool, a bowling alley, and a billiards room, among other luxuries. Number 5, The Lavish Swan Dinner of Ward McAllister. Ward McAllister, a prominent member of New York's high society during the Gilded Age, held the reins on social preferences and determined who could join the 400 list, a coveted roster of elite families. One fabled scene at New York's luxurious Delmonico's restaurant surpassed all bounds of extravagance. Guests gathered around an artificial lake, adorned with floating swans and an array of flowers. 
The swans, enclosed in golden wire cages to prevent any disruption, floated serenely. McAllister's influence was unchallenged, and his soirees were veritable spectacles. Number 6, Marion Grace's Monkey in a Tuxedo Dinner. Marion Grace Phantom Fish Anthony, known as Mamie, was a New York high society figure notorious for her imaginative parties during the Gilded Age. Her lavish gatherings in New York and Newport were attended by hundreds, all eager to experience her next creative stunt. On one occasion, an incognito prince presented a monkey dressed in a tuxedo. On another, she dressed a friend as the Russian Tsar, complete with identical regal attire and jewels. Such antics kept guests intrigued and amused. Number 7, The Twice Daily Sheet Changes Amid the Gilded Age's extravagances, the wealthy pursued ostentation for its own sake, regardless of practicality. Servants were to be invisible, using concealed entrances and secret passages to avoid being seen by guests in the main rooms. Sheets were changed at least twice a day, irrespective of whether the bed had been used. Similarly, towels were replaced after each use. The servants would boast of their numerous daily changes, elevating the family's prestige. Number 8, The Era of Private Train Cars before the advent of modern private jets, the pinnacle of luxury was the private train car. This concept was first introduced by the owner of a traveling circus during the Gilded Age, quickly adopted by the era's millionaires. These private rail cars, complete with luxurious sleeping quarters, offices, kitchens, and observation platforms, allowed the most influential Americans to travel in unparalleled comfort. Before the Air Force One, the most important Americans traveled in private rail cars, a significant upgrade from horse-drawn carriages. Number 9, Mummy Unwrapping Parties In the race to outdo each other with the novelty of their parties, the Gilded Age elite sought to create unforgettable events. One such extraordinary spectacle involved unwrapping a mummy. With the growing fascination for ancient Egypt, this eccentricity began in England during the late 19th century before making its way to the United States. Affordable mummies were readily available for purchase, allowing the rich to stage dramatic unwrappings at their parties. Number 10, Competitive Eating Contests. Competitions to test who could consume the most food gained popularity during the Gilded Age. The wealthy flaunted their economic prosperity by showcasing their appetites. In an era where plumpness symbolized wealth and good health, financiers like Diamond Brady became known for their voracious eating habits. Brady, who had a penchant for diamonds, was famous for his immense appetite. His substantial breakfasts and snacks were mere warm-ups for his grand meal of the day, which featured an extravagant feast of oysters, crabs, soups, lobsters, ducks, and more. Number 11, The Near Extinction of the Snowy Egret The snowy egret, native to America, boasts a distinct appearance with delicate, white plumage that cascades from its head, neck, and back. The Gilded Age nearly witnessed the extinction of this bird due to the high demand for its feathers. The feathers adorned the clothing and accessories of the wealthy, including hats and fans. These birds were hunted solely for their feathers, and they narrowly escaped extinction with the passing of the Migratory Bird Treaty Act of 1913, along with other protective measures. Number 12, the 14,000 cubic meter marble cottage. While much of the American population struggled to make ends meet during the Gilded Age, the economic elite competed fervently in all domains for the best and biggest. A case in point is Marble House, a Newport mansion constructed on Bellevue Avenue by William K. Vanderbilt and his wife, Alva, between 1888 and 1892. This 50-room cottage incorporated a staggering 14,000 cubic meters of marble, and the household employed 36 staff members to cater to their opulent lifestyle. Number 13, The Surge in Prostitution Due to Economic Prosperity 
As economic prosperity bloomed, during the Gilded Age, the proliferation of bordellos in New York City was conspicuous. The focal point was West 39th Street, west of 7th Avenue, which transformed into a hub of elegant brothels. Here, the working girls offered imaginative services, even startling their more traditional colleagues. This gave rise to a debate about the old and new ways of practicing the world's oldest profession. The proximity of this activity to the Metropolitan Opera House led many solitary gentlemen to discreetly venture thereafter enjoying operas like La Traviata or The Barber of Seville. Number 14, Burdened by Their Lavish Jewels Prominent establishments of the era, such as Tiffany and Marcus, provided an array of breathtaking jewelry to their clientele. These pieces incorporated a fusion of gold, silver, diamonds, emeralds, pearls, aquamarines, enamels, ebony, and other precious materials. Women of means carried the weight of these jewels, displaying their opulence at soirees and galas. Number 15, The Ever-Changing Wardrobe In the homes of the affluent during the Gilded Age, family members changed attire several times a day based on the hour, activities, and circumstances. Morning attire was suitable for breakfast, only to be replaced just before lunch by more formal attire. Afternoons allowed a return to lighter garments before the formal dinner. This cycle was further complicated by sporting activities like horseback riding and hunting, which required specific outfits. Even when retiring to their chambers at night or dawn, the rigmarole of changing attire continued. Number 16, CKG Billings Horseback Dinner A vivid snapshot of Gilded Age eccentricity, orchestrated by industrial magnate, and avid equestrian Cornelius Kingsley Garrison Billings, occurred in 1903. Billings rented the Grand Ballroom of the Cherry Restaurant on Fifth Avenue in New York. The space was transformed into a pastoral setting, complete with grass floors and imitation streams. Thirty-three horses were ushered in via elevators, and Billings, along with thirty-two guests, dined while mounted on their horses. They enjoyed champagne through tubes connected to bottles stored in saddlebags. Number 17, The Murder of Stanford White Architect Stanford White, celebrated for his works during the Gilded Age, constructing mansions, public furnishings, institutions, and religious buildings, met a tragic end on June 25, 1906. He was shot three times by millionaire Harry Kendall Thor, a mentally unstable man obsessively fixated on an earlier relationship between his wife, the young actress Evelyn Nesbitt, and White. White had previously seduced and abused Nesbitt when she was just 15, but they had no contact in the years leading up to the fateful incident. Number 18, Railroad Money as Second Class While Cornelius Vanderbilt and his wife, Alva, were immensely wealthy due to the family's shipping and railroad empire, their access to the upper echelons of society was limited. The fortune from railroads was considered new money, and traditional clans like the Astors, who had accumulated their wealth through real estate and fur trading, looked down upon the nouveau riche. Overcoming societal resistance, Alva and her husband sent out more than 700 invitations to inaugurate their mansion, Marble House, eventually cementing their place in a traditionalist society. Number 19, James Stillman's Forest-Themed Dining Room James Stillman, a financier and entrepreneur, amassed his fortune through banking, railroads, and land trading, primarily in New York and Texas. As the chairman of the board of the National City Bank, one of the largest banks in the Western Hemisphere, he established partnerships with influential businessmen like John D. Rockefeller and Abraham and Solomon Lowe. In the early 20th century, Stillman transformed his dining room into a rustic forest, complete with an artificial waterfall. Number 20, Strict Protocol Governing Wealthy Dinners During the Gilded Age, while 90% of American families survived on less than $1,200 a year, the wealthiest indulged in the latest novelties of their time, 
such as electric light, phonographs, and sewing machines. Scarcity was a reality for the poor, but lavish dinners were governed by strict protocol for the rich. Sarah Josepha Hale, editor of the magazine Godey's Ladies Book, acted as the etiquette arbiter for middle and upper class women regarding fashion, decorum, and morality. Number 21, The Dining Room, Center of Socialization. The dining room emerged as the central hub for entertainment and socialization within the home during the Gilded Age. It was expected to dazzle guests with its elegance and luxury. Dinner invitations were sent out with a window of two days to two weeks in advance, depending on the event's significance. This era saw attire for men comprising black pants, shirt, vest, jacket, white tie, and gloves, while women donned formal evening dresses and accessories. Number 22, a delay beyond 15 minutes is frowned upon. Most hosts invited guests for 8 p.m., and even a delay of 15 minutes was frowned upon. Men were expected to wear black pants, shirt, vest, jacket, black tie, and white gloves, while women adorned formal evening dresses and accessories. Hosts were advised to be dressed and ready to receive guests ahead of time, as some punctual attendees might arrive before the scheduled hour. Number 23, Greetings to Guests with Their Own Protocol The protocol for greeting guests during the Gilded Age was also distinct. Godey's Ladies Book advised that as each guest or group entered the room, they should take a few steps forward and first approach the lady. If there were multiple ladies, one should begin with the eldest, followed by the younger ones, and lastly, the gentleman. The magazine, which dictated etiquette, disapproved of hosts or hostesses constantly entering and exiting the dining room during the evening, asserting that such behavior was not conducive to maintaining an air of tact while preparing the house for company. Number 24, the prohibition of serving fish with potatoes. Fortuitously, the popular British dish fish and chips, served in newspaper cones, disregarded the norms and etiquettes of the Gilded Age. During this era, serving fish with potatoes was frowned upon. Godey's Ladies Book provided precise instructions for dinner courses, begin with raw oysters, followed by one or two soups. Proceed with fish, followed by meat as the main course, followed by salad. Dessert, fruits, and confections concluded the meal. Offering potatoes with fish was strictly avoided. Number 25, Displaying Wealth Among the Gilded Elite In 1897, the wealthiest 4,000 families in the United States possessed as much wealth as the combined total of another 11.6 million family groups. Paradoxically, this economic inequality did not prompt the elite to be discreet in displaying their wealth. On the contrary, Gilded Age elites relished flaunting their riches. Experts suggest that only after the Great Depression did Americans begin to be more reserved about their fortunes. The Gilded Age was a period that brought many positive changes to the United States, such as industrialization, but it was also rife with excesses and injustices. Thanks for watching. If you found this video interesting, make sure to subscribe to our channel and give this video a like. We'll be back soon with more curiosities from history.